It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of knowledge. It was the age of foolishness. It was a bad flashback to high school English. Anyway, the title of this video is A Tale of Two Trees. And some of you will get the joke there. I know Patrick over at Educated Climber. He reads a lot. He'll get it. Thumbs up to Patrick's channel. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's called Educated Climber. Go check it out. He's uh, very different than my channel, but uh, I, I really appreciate what he does. So my video today is an interesting story about two ancient old trees in Saratoga. They're valley oaks, and there's a lot of history in the valley oaks. So, but I'm going to kind of flash forward to the end of the story first because that'll give a little bit more um, credence to why I think this is such an interesting story. So a few weeks ago we got a call from this guy who wanted us to give him a bid on his trees and we got the job and it turns out that uh, he had been watching the YouTube channel and he said I got to have those guys trim these trees. So I met the uh, the woman, an incredibly wonderful woman, very, very nice. I, I hardly ever get a, a client as friendly and as nice as she is. And she told me that they bought the house because of the trees. And the trees meant an awful lot to her. So we did two, two days on the trees. Both Jorge and myself, we both climbed together at a, a ground person working uh, under us. So we were able to... Um, to do it that way you know we we did the big tree by the house then we did the big tree over the the creek today and uh, she kept coming out and she was very very happy with what we were doing and i i kept asking her questions you know about you know would you like this would you like that would you like it? And she kept saying whatever you think i trust you just do what you think is right and i appreciate that i mean <laughs> but everybody's a little bit different you know some people have got different ideas so anyway, getting to the end of the story, um, we finished it up. I feel like we did a beautiful job. And she came out to, to pay me and we sat down and we were looking at the trees and she was looking up at them and, and tears came to her eyes and she started to cry. And I didn't know what to think. And she looked at me, she said, I didn't say anything to you, but my husband died four days ago. And the last thing that he told me before he died was to take care of these trees. <sighs> I, you know, had I known that before I started the job, I don't know if I would have done things much different, but it certainly would have changed my attitude about what we were doing. And I've been in shock, you know, the whole ride home, I was just, you know, kind of, I, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I felt so bad for this woman. She's got four young children and, uh, but she was so, so happy to look up at these trees. And I felt like, you know, it was me fulfilling her husband's last wish about the trees that were, were so important to them. So anyway, I'm gonna get on to the story about the trees, but I wanted to start it off with the end of the story <laughs> so you can have a little better appreciation for these magnificent trees. Let's go check out some Quercus lobata, Valley Oaks. So with all that being said, let's get on with the job here. First things first, got to get the ropes oh. up in the tree. I made a great <laughs> shot. Oh, messed up. It happens. We keep multiple throw balls. I have two in this bag here. And the one I really prefer is the one with the, uh, the yellow cord. It uh, seems to be less likely to get tangled up. The braided cord that I have I'm just not as happy with so I'm going to order another one. You can see I've got um, a couple of ropes set up just to get started. I went on one side, Jorge went on the other side and we both worked all day long. It was um, kind of a touchy job. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot that needs to be done but there's some preliminary things that we have to do first like there and all the acorns and all the slippery stuff off of the, the roof because we are doing a lot of work from the roof. A lot of our jobs involve uh, getting up on the house. So let's start with the base of the tree and the history of this house. I want you to take note of this old piece of foundation here. 
this kind of surprised me and I had to stop and kind of evaluate um, what's going on. First off, the house, the original house was built 130 years ago and clearly this is a piece of the original foundation. So the tree actually started to, to destroy the first house and they had to rebuild again. Now my question is, did they damage the roots in the new foundation? I don't know. I assume there must have been some damage, but the tree seems relatively healthy. I couldn't find any damage at the base of the tree. And this is also very interesting. I want you to note this top piece of wood on here. It is old growth redwood and it is a true two inches by four inches and you can see there aren't any knots in there it's a it's a, a real high quality piece of wood that stood the test of time you know the old original uh, old growth redwood was very very uh, rot and decay resistant as is evidenced by this piece that was on the ground so back up in the tree um, there was a lot of noise the neighbors had some giant eucalyptus trees being removed and there was four or five guys with chainsaws and felt like uh, bees going so I'm toning the sound down in the program uh, day number one was pretty noisy there was a play area underneath the second tree and they put a zip line up and what I'm showing you this for is the way the zip line was attached to this secondary tree. Um, it's, a, it's a type of a juniper. I'm not sure exactly what type it is, but it's completely surrounding the trunk on the cable. So I recommended to her to take this zip line down or put a better type of attachment that doesn't damage the tree. Look at that. Instead of cutting the stubs off, the contractors cut the wood to fit the stud. That doesn't make any sense to me. So back up in tree number one, there were some defects. There's a, a woodpecker hole here in one of the old stubs. And that means that this particular limb is clearly weaker, but there's not a significant amount of weight on it and it kind of bends back in the right direction. Cable. There was an ancient cable in this tree. And I say ancient for a couple of reasons. It's uh, it's rusty, which tells me that it was either a galvanized cable that got sold, that the galvanized uh, coating has worn off, or it wasn't galvanized to begin with. This was interesting to see it go through that crotch because originally this was a straight pull, and as time went on, the crotch caused it to bend. Now I want you to take close notice of the of the wraps on this cable. This is an old style cable technique. I, I still use this. I think it's a very beautiful technique, but look at how neat and how clean that is. I'm guessing this cable is probably 60 or 70 years old. The one thing that's really cool about the lobata, the Quercus lobata, is the branches, many of them grow straight out or up at odd angles. You don't have a central leader to tie into. And here you can see how the tree, actually how the house evolved around the tree. I can't imagine that the house originally had this cut out and it's considerably larger now that the the tree has gotten big. The house is larger. So on to day two, uh, <laughs> once again we're having a little bit of trouble with the throw ball. You know he's trying to get it on this side of the branch and yeah it was a little bit frustrating it was a great shot to begin with we're trying to get it oh he just gave up let's do it again <laughs> it happens underneath this tree was an obstacle that i don't normally run into there were thistles growing everywhere and without thinking about it my rope dragged through the thistles causing the rope to be full of little burrs and thorns so I got in there with the pole saw and knocked down a lot of those thistles just to get started. There was an interesting playhouse um, on this property that was quite well built. We had um, oh, like some of our work was view. about improving the view from the, the upper deck 
into the tree so I did um, suggest that we take off some of the branches that were too close to the house now this is uh, interesting because I want to show you all the old wounds this is in the older of the two trees and you can see where there was a lot of past cuts that were made some of them older some of them were made for the the play structure the playhouse there some of them are so old that the the wounds are grown all up and around some of them are starting to decay those old stubs there were interesting a lot of cambium tissue growing around this old wound but it's a race between will it close up or will it rot out from the inside Jorge has been with me a long time he's been oh gosh 24 25 years now and he's uh, he's quite adept at throwing the rope he missed on that last shot but uh, more often than not he hits it on the first shot now, there we go that wasn't a real high shot but notice the way that we tie um, tie the rope in, in a ball there to get a little bit of weight to it uh, he also wrapped the clip around it makes it easier to have something to throw there's some old stubs they've completely grown around and I'm showing you all these stubs because there are weaknesses and problems from past things including this wire that's coming out of the tree who what was this for was it an old clothesline was it something on an old farm who knows here's a relatively large cavity that is still intact it hasn't rotted out yet time will tell I mean here. some of these were better than others some of them were completely rotted out and some of them were, were fairly sound so moving through the tree oftentimes means setting your rope or multiple ropes or in many cases both sides of the rope so what Jorge is doing here is he's using the bottom of the rope to um, access other parts of the tree there's a hollow I don't know how deep that one is but you can see how a lot of these branches are they're, they're just so wide spreading so you got to keep moving around and, and setting your rope in multiple places so that you can triangulate and get in comfortable working positions where you can stand on the branches and use the pole saw or, or use your equipment there's the first sign of some hollowing out <laughs> good old Jorge I like this guy we're a good team you'll see him in a lot of my videos oh that's me I screwed up I reached down for my pole saw which was hanging from my side there good band-aids are important you got to keep those with you so 45 years ago there was a guy I called him a mentor but he was actually kind of a corrupt businessman and he told me something that kind of bothered me but at the time I was young and naive he told me when you're doing a tree job cut off every single stub that you see even the old stubs as close as you can that way the client can see that you did a lot of work and I thought about that I thought oh, that's not right because a lot of these stubs have got active cambium tissue growing up around trying to close them off why would you open up the wound and make the wound larger there's a nice looking old cut that's not that old but you can see it's absorbing the wound well so I'm showing you lots and lots of old wounds because this tree is a story of, of countless years of other tree people doing work on it. Some of these stubs may have been rotting off pieces. Some of them are completely enveloped. That one should just come off. It's rotted. That one, I'd leave it alone. This is kind of an odd cut right here. I'm doing a still here because it sticks out a little too high on the top and a little close on the bottom. That could have been done better. You're managing four ropes. Are you going to come down with all four ropes? No. Nope. <laughs> we have two ropes right here, and I just come down two ropes. That's crazy. So we're at the end of the day, and I'd like to say I'd like to dedicate this video to the man who hired us that passed away. 
He truly loved his trees, and I'm, I'm very happy that his wife loves the trees as much as, as she does. Hopefully they will continue to be taken care of by quality people for years to come. Thanks a lot.